Hi, Yarnabees. It's me, Crochet B. Yes, I'm out here still. You've probably been wondering where I've been all this time. Um, well, this is yet... Um, I guess it's been a long time since we've done a Tales from the Carpet Trail. So, I'll uh, give you a bit of an update, sort of, I guess, on what's been going on. Uh, first of all, brought to you by... What's in my cup? In this case, just coffee. A little too early for a whiskey just yet. So, obviously, uh, like a lot of people, my business has been drastically affected by uh, the COVID-19 thing. So, it's been a real struggle. Um, so, you haven't seen me for a combination of reasons. Uh, one is, of course, uh, everything that's been going on with uh, Sandy's sister... Charlene and everything we've been dealing with all of that and I've tried to uh, Help Sandy with that and be supportive and that's kind of been a big focus of a lot of what we've been dealing with um, And uh, anyway, so yeah, obviously uh, things are a little tough business is Maybe 25% of normal for me, which is not great. Um, I'm really having a hard time with it I'm not the sort of guy that's made to be sitting around uh, waiting for the phone to ring normally at this time of year. I would be doing probably between six and eight jobs a day um, Today I only had two. It's understandable. I guess it is and it isn't um, We have been um, Actually, I want to say this um, There are a lot of people that have gotten a lot of attention um for working in, in the middle of the crisis and what's been going on and have been given um, a lot of accolades and a lot of kudos and much deserved. I mean, the doctors and nurses on the front line, um, for sure, they're doing the best they can. Um, you know, the grocery store workers and the people that keep the stores open so that we're able to get our food, you know, absolutely good for them. Um, truck drivers that are keeping the supply chain going and keeping everything going like good for those guys But I got to tell you there is one group of people that's being very much overlooked And that's the cleaning people not just the carpet cleaning people like myself, but the um, Janitorial people the people that clean and disinfect surfaces the people at the hospital they're often the forgotten and the invisible people because most people never see them when they're doing their work because a lot of the work is done at night uh, when people are sleeping or when people are not in the office or whatever. And um, cleaning and janitorial services are one of the declared essential services by the government because what we're doing, especially now with the virus going on, couldn't be any more important. Um, for me... I, I want to keep working and I believe that what I'm doing is really important uh, What's frustrating is is people don't seem to want you to come so I it's You would think at a time when everybody is Confined to their home and they're stuck in their house The one thing they would want would be everything to be as clean and disinfected and deodorized as possible so if there was any logic to what was going on in the world today, you would think that we would be run off our feet. Everybody would want us to come. And um, the opposite is true. So I know a lot of it is fear. A lot of people are very fearful about what's going on. I mean, it's understandable. All we keep hearing is bad stories and the news, um, rather than just reporting the news and the facts, seems to go out of their way to sensationalize and make things seem um, dire and horrible and awful and they talked about the number of infected people and all of that and it just scares the crap out of everybody so it makes everybody just want to kind of hide and honestly part of it is of course a lot of people are out of work and uh, money is really tight right now Canada has um, some programs in place but nothing is really happening the earliest anybody can apply is actually this Monday so if you're somebody like myself who hasn't um, had a paycheck in three weeks the earliest that I can apply for any relief uh, from the government program is Monday probably won't see a check for at least a week so it's going to be about five weeks until anything actually comes our way so I'm a little luckier than most in that I 
I work from home. I don't have a commercial space that I rent. Um, my business is structured so that I don't have uh, a loan for my vehicle. All of my equipment is paid for. So I basically just have to pay for my work expenses and phone bills and things like that. So it makes it a little easier for me to to weather the storm. But we're hurting. I mean, we're feeling it. A lot of us are, right? So anyway, the other thing I want to say is we are going to be giving you a link to a video after this. And it's a video that I found from a doctor in New York City that is right in the middle of what's going on right now and after I watched the video I actually felt uh, pretty reassured that uh, it's nowhere near as dangerous or as bad as a lot of people think so I've had a number of people say to me oh my god you gotta be crazy why would you go into somebody's home uh, you have no idea if they're infected if there's virus in there why would you do that sort of thing um, well, a couple reasons. One is, again, we're declared an essential service, and I take that um, duty very seriously. I think that what I do is actually really important, and that I really bring not only value, but I, I do, I do a good and noble thing. That's that's what I really believe. So, an example of that is a job that I did have this week for a fellow um, in Duncan. He had bought a house, very large home. Uh, it was an estate sale. Uh, Mom had passed away, so they were selling. But the house was Mom living there with her five grown-up adult kind of hillbilly sons. And you talk about uh, full of junk from one thing to the other. This poor guy had been taking uh, loads and loads of stuff to the dump that was left behind. There was garbage left behind. And you go in. And you look at the carpet, and this carpet is covered in um, rat and mouse poop, which means they've also obviously been urinating in there. Uh, this is a very toxic, very dangerous thing for somebody to live in that kind of environment. So he needed me to go in and do what I do to get rid of all of that so that he could safely move himself and his family in there. So I think that's a good and heroic thing that I did for him. Um, you know, that's when I know that what I'm doing is really important. What I learned from this doctor, so I want to give you a bit of an idea of how I'm able to work and how I can make this work. So essentially, um, we all know a little bit about the virus, but what he explained is that in order for a person to contract the virus, um, uh, person to person contact would be if I physically touched somebody that had the virus, like shook their hand or gave them a hug, then the virus would be transferred to my body. And then if I touch my face, it gets trans I, I contract the virus because it will either go up the nasal passage, through the mouth, or through the eyeball. And that's how it gets into your body. Uh, we've heard a lot about airborne transmission, and that's actually not happening in most cases in order for you to contract it from airborne transmission again you have to be close to somebody within that six foot distance that we're hearing about for a sustained period of time which is at least 15 or 20 minutes so when I go to somebody's house so for example I went to a place today um, I knock on the door I step back the person answers the door, so I've maintained my distance. They know why I'm there. I get them to, what is it you need me to do? I get them to let me in and show me. So I will walk in. I'll have a look at the area that they want me to clean. And then generally the person will leave me to it. So I give people the option. If you are very concerned about me in your home, you can leave the home. Uh, go walk the dog, go for a walk, go grocery shopping. You can leave me to it and then come back after it's done. Or you can just literally go to another part of the house and there is no danger to you whatsoever. So then after I've done that, I will bring in all my equipment and then everything that I need to do, do the job. I'll get myself uh, completely set up, ready to start. 
So that's after I brought everything, I've touched everything, I've done whatever I've done. Then I get my hands and I put them in my solution tank. And my cleaning solution will kill any virus that's on my hands at all. So at which point, if I do accidentally touch myself in the face, I've covered myself with with my cleaner, so therefore it is safe. Um, the other thing is, is when I'm in somebody's home outside of my van, I'm very conscious to make sure that I don't touch my face for any reason. So even if I get something on my hand, as long as I don't touch my face, I will not contract the virus. It doesn't go through the skin into the body. It has to go through the mouth, the nose, or the eye in order for you to get that, or into your lungs. Um, so then I will, I'll do the job, I'll do what I need to do. Um, the person will either um, pay me as soon as I'm done or they've already left the check or cash for me to do the job. And then I, I pack all my stuff up, I take it back, I put it all in my van. And then when I get inside my van, in behind the steering wheel, I have my soap sitting right there. And I'll put a squirt of my very concentrated cleaning soap on my hand wash my hands again again no virus now because I've killed anything that would be on there then I'm free to drive and at that point I can touch my face or scratch my nose or do whatever I have to do because I know there's no virus inside my van and that I've washed myself and then I'm perfectly safe so I'm actually not at all worried people have said you know how you're crazy like what you're doing is even more dangerous than the doctors because they've at least got a mask on and they're in a sterile environment and they've got things done they have a controlled situation I'm walking into anything but as long as I continue to keep my hands washed I don't touch my face and I follow the protocol that I've been following I have almost zero chance of getting this virus if I do contract the virus um, and I don't want to um, I'm actually not that concerned on a personal level. Um, I know there's been a lot of conflicting information, but two things. I've been looking at numbers and worldwide, worldwide, and even here in, B, even lower in BC, the overall death rate for everybody that contracts this virus is only 2%. And that includes the elderly people, uh, people with immune compromised situations, everybody overall total. So a lot of people can argue all they want that um, about how many people are getting it. Um, we know there are people that will get the virus and uh, never go to the hospital, never be tested, but they've had it. Um, so that we'll never know exactly how many people have had it. But the one thing we will absolutely know for sure is how many people have died because you don't when you die, obviously there's a body and things are dealt with. Um, so that's 2%. And then when you take the people over 65 and um, anybody with a precondition of any kind, and you take those people out of that 2%, now you're at 0.3%. So that means I have a 99.7% chance of survival if I contract the virus. That's kind of how it's going. So we're, you know, we're struggling. We are getting a little bit of work. I had some this past week because it is end of the month and there are some people that still have to move. So I did get some move out stuff, thank goodness. But it's very depressed here like it is, I'm sure, wherever you are. Um, there's absolutely no real estate selling. The real estate, the main real estate office here, which is Remax, uh, their office is actually closed. Uh, there's very little... Uh, rental move out activity most people are kind of staying put um, especially now the government is kind of mandating that a person can't be evicted if they can't pay their rent so even if people are out of work and can't pay the rent the landlords aren't allowed to evict them so there's nobody being uh, having to move because they've been evicted that's not going to happen right away either so we're all in this sort of crazy holding pattern waiting for <laughs> the world to get back to normal whenever that's going to be we've been sticking pretty close to home and I sure am not liking it it's uh it's funny I've always thought that it's nice for Sandy she you know doesn't have to get up at a certain time to go to work so she gets up when she gets up and then she has her freedom to do uh, whatever she wants and uh, 
but uh, Sandy very seldom ever goes out of the house. She goes to the crochet chair and sits there for 20 hours and goes to bed. But uh, anyway, I'm not finding that having lots of time to watch Netflix and all the other things is really all that enjoyable for me. I'm not really liking it. So we're all doing the best we can. So I really encourage all of you to watch the video that we we link. I mean, I know we've all been... There's been a ton of information flying around, but, um, you know, anything you watch on the news, uh, there's always a spin put on it by the, the news agency, whether you think so or not. They always try to make it seem more dire than it is. Of course, the government telling you anything, of course, they've got their own uh, politics and mandate that they follow through. But this video from this fellow who's an actual... He's a doctor and it's his job to ventilate patients that need to come in and be ventilated. So there's a guy that knows probably more about what's going on than just about anybody else. And when I listen to him calmly explain um, what he calls the rules, what we need to do to keep ourselves safe, and uh, sort of how things are going, it made me feel a lot better about the situation. So uh, I tend to be a bit of a daredevil at the best of times um, you know it's a long story but uh, I've been through a lot in my life I've uh, been lots of bashes and crashes and I've cheated death on several occasions so you know this kind of stuff normally doesn't concern me or scare me too much I'm far more worried about the effect that it's having on the economy and business I'm very worried that we're going to see you know the consequences of this it's not it's not going to be uh, the number of people that died or all of those things, it's all terrible. But we're going to see uh, businesses fail completely. Uh, people lose their jobs, not get them back. We're probably going to see skyrocketing, skyrocketing uh, bankruptcies, uh, divorces, I would imagine, uh, domestic violence. Um, all these things are going to get worse and worse the longer that we're going through this thing. So... I'm hopeful we're doing pretty well in BC. The cases are going down and uh, we're flattening that curve quite well. We seem to be doing as well or better than the rest of Canada. Um, so I guess that's a positive thing. Uh, but they're still saying the earliest we can expect anything to be reasonably going back to a normal situation is, is July at the earliest. And that's if a lot of good things really go our way. So we're still a long way away. Um, from getting things back to normal so I guess that's all I've got to say I mean I'm sorry it wasn't one of my funnier stories or anything uh, crazy but I just want to let you know that uh, you know we're out here we're doing our job there are people like me that you know although we're all being told to stay home there are some of us that have to go out there to make a living support our families and do important stuff so if you know somebody that's uh, you know driving a truck or working at a grocery store and the doctors and nurses are getting all the attention in the world you know and good on them but you know there's a lot of regular folks that are going out there and fighting the fight in their own way too and uh, we're all in this together so stay safe uh, please watch the video and and learn what the rules are and follow the rules and uh, before we know it hopefully we'll all be back to doing what it is we want to do okay thanks everybody We'll talk to you soon. Bye.